Not sure where to start when it comes to practicing for your AP Computer Science Principles test? Then stay tuned because in this video, we're gonna go over 11 study tips that can help you score that four or five on your AP exam. This video is brought to you by Albert. If you haven't already created your free account to start practicing for your AP CSP exam, you can do so using the link in the video description below. Without further ado though, let's jump into these tips. The first thing to look at are some multiple choice tips. When it comes to the computer science principles exam, you're gonna have 120 minutes to answer 70 questions. And these 70 questions are gonna make up 70% of your exam score. So it's really important that you do particularly well on this part of the exam. Since there are 70 questions and they are worth 70% of your exam score, as you guessed it, each one of these questions is worth 1% of your overall exam score. When it comes to the CSP exam, you're gonna have a mix of multiple choice and multi-select questions. These multi-select questions are questions in which you're gonna have to choose more than just one answer choice sometimes in order to identify the right answer. The second tip when it comes to tackling the multiple choice section of the computer science exam is to make sure that you understand each of the big ideas. There are five big ideas when it comes to computer science principles. The top big ideas are related to algorithms, programming, data, and the impacts of computing. If you were to focus on just these big ideas alone, you'd already have covered 85% of the content of the multiple choice section of your computer science principles exam. For example, big idea three on algorithms and programming makes up 30 to 35% of the overall exam. So pro tip here, if you're short on time when it comes to preparing for your computer science principles exam, you're going to want to focus on the areas that are tested more frequently than the areas that are tested a little bit less frequently. The third tip we have for you is to make sure you're making the use of some well known tried and true multiple choice strategies. For example, you're gonna always wanna make sure that you guess for every single question, even if it's a complete guess. And the reason why is because when it comes to AP exams, the College Board does not deduct points for questions that you get wrong. You only earn points when you get questions right. So it makes no sense for you to just leave five or 10 questions blank at the end of the exam in the case where you haven't had enough time to finish the section. Instead, just make sure that you're bubbling in something. Another tip is even without knowing the right answer, you should try to think about the type of answer that you would be looking for. For example, are you looking for a Boolean statement or a recursive command? These sorts of questions to ask yourself can help you sift through the answer choices once you actually start reading through them. You're obviously going to want to read through all of your answer choices before you select a final answer and also practice the process of elimination or Poe. The process of elimination is a great way for you to boost your chances of getting a particular question right. Even if you can only eliminate just one answer choice, it goes a long way in your chances of getting that particular question right. When it comes to 120 minutes for 70 questions, it means you're gonna have close to two minutes for every single question that you are answering. So it's helpful for you to keep that in mind because if there's a particular question that you're struggling with, you might be better off just circling that and moving on than continuing to belabor the point in rereading that question over and over again. You might also find it helpful to actively read as you're working through the multiple choice section. This means circling or underlining key phrases or words just so that you truly understand what the question is asking you. Lastly, you might find the strategy of trying to think about what the answer might be before you read the answer choices to be helpful in just forming an approach for you as you work your way through the multiple choice section. The last tip we have for you when it comes to just tackling the multiple choice section for the computer science principles exam is to make sure that you're familiar with the ways that the College Board phrases questions for you in the multiple choice section. To do this, you can take a look at sample practice questions that have been released in the course and exam description guide, or you can check out a site like Albert in order to get some extra practice and exposure to the sorts of phrasings that you can expect on your CSP exam. Now that we've covered four tips when it comes to the multiple choice section, let's transition to talk about seven tips that you can take to do well on your performance task. Before we do so, if you're finding this video helpful, do us a favor and hit that like button below. By doing so, you'll help other students that are taking the CSP exam find this video. The first tip when it comes to doing well on your performance task is to make sure that you're comfortable collaborating with your peers. Oftentimes, your performance task is going to be connected to some sort of collaborative work that you've already done in class. By collaborating with your peers, it can be a great way for you to think about some new potential ideas or perspectives that you personally may not have had. Our second recommendation is to make sure that you choose a challenge or problem that actually interests you. This is going to be a project that you're going to be investing a decent amount of time on, so if you don't really like it in the very beginning, you're not going to probably grow to like it later on. Instead, focus on the sorts of things that pique your interest when it comes to computer science. 
The third thing you're going to want to do when it comes to your performance task is make sure that your task covers all of the requirements. This means that your code should include instructions for input, collection of data in lists, a procedure, sequencing, selection, and iteration, as well as instructions for output. You don't want to wait until the last second to use your video editing software to put together your project summary. You're going to want to figure out which software you're going to use, whether that's Camtasia, Screencastify, Loom, QuickTime Pro, or iMovie. Whatever software you end up settling on, it's helpful for you to storyboard out your video before you actually take on the task of creating your video. To do this, you're going to want to make sure that your video covers these key requirements. Your video should be one minute max, it should have no voice narration, it should demonstrate input, output, and functionality, and be output in the proper size and format. If your initial take doesn't meet these requirements, that's totally okay. That's the beauty of video editing software. You can easily change the format or size of your video to fit the requirements, and also you can incorporate captions in the place of narration. Whatever your final output is, the important thing is that it is one minute max, and so you're going to want to practice working with the video editing software that you're going to use a few weeks or months in advance, as opposed to waiting till the last second. Our fifth tip when it comes to the AP Computer Science Principles Performance task is to practice writing succinct written responses. You're going to be faced with three written responses and you're going to have at max 750 words that you can use. This means it's important for you to assume that your reader is educated in computer science and that you don't have to explain every single thing to them versus what's important for them to understand about your response. What's most important is for you to explain and communicate your work, show how your program accomplishes the task, and that you understand what your program is doing. Our sixth tip when it comes to the performance task is to understand how your task is going to be scored. The best way to do this is to reference the previously released scoring guidelines by the College Board. For example, let's think about the first point which is typically rewarded for the program purpose and function. A common mistake that students make is not taking advantage of the video format they have and showing that their program works. Screenshots are not enough, you have to show the visual results of your code. Our final tip is to check out the sample student portfolios that have been shared in the past so that you can better understand how other students were graded when it came to their performance tasks. Something to keep in mind is that in prior versions of the AP Computer Science Principles exam, there were two sections to the performance task, a create and explore section. Starting in 2021, there is only a create performance task. When you look at older tests like the 2018 or the 2017 exams, you'll be able to look through some commentary that people have on the create section. By doing this, you're going to be able to take a look at a few students that scored perfect scores, followed by students that didn't necessarily score full points. A common error was whether or not responses could clearly identify two algorithms in the code and how they related to the overall function of the code. So if you're looking for the sorts of things that trip other students up, it can be a great thing for you to work your way through the sample student portfolios. There you have it, 11 AP Computer Science Principles tips and tricks to help you score that four or five on your exam. If you found this video helpful, do us a favor and hit that like button below. By doing so, you'll help other students like yourself find this video. Also, if you haven't already created your free account on Albert, you can do so using the link in the video description below. With it, you'll get access to a few free topics that you can use to start practicing for your exam today. Finally, if you haven't already, consider subscribing by hitting that button and the notification bell below. By doing so, you'll get more review content like this. And in the case where you're a teacher watching this video and you haven't already tried out Albert with your school, you can do so by applying to Pilot using the link in the video description below. By doing so, you'll get access to our thousands of practice questions to try out with your students for 30 days. That's it for this time though. While you wait for the next video, check out these videos that YouTube thinks you might like.